All right, so when it comes to NSPS, you know, we've talked about it ad nauseum, that it's, it's here, it has been here, and as a, as a retailer, the message is start working on it right now. You know, if we get sell through, great, don't count on it, start working on it right now. We gotta be proactive in a way that we probably haven't been before. So I wanna talk from the retailer's perspective and just kind of throw out a few ideas that we've been thinking about. We can also jump into questions too. To piggyback onto what John just said about the manuals, the manuals of stoves are now federally regulated, that they are a part of the appliance. And because they're federally regulated, they must be readily accessible, not by you, but by the consumer. So the person I always go back to on this is Chris Newfeld, and he's he's an absolute guru on this on this rule. And you know, I would our rule at our stores is within arm's reach, is that is that don't put them all on a rack because what could happen is you could argue that the consumer doesn't know which manual goes to which stove, and so they weren't able to find it out. And maybe you can explain that away to the EPA, but you know, my, my advice would be don't take that risk. Have it within arm's reach. Um, if it's a static stove, you know, put it inside the ash drawer inside the stove. If it's a burn model, maybe put it in your grocery rack right next to it. But that's just something really practical that you, we should be doing. So manuals is a big one. Another thing is just to realize, like John talked about, is that EPA really is going out and checking, and, and EPA can actually deputize people. So it doesn't have to be necessarily someone that works for the EPA. It can be someone at the state level that they've deputized to do this. I've got a friend in Spokane, Washington, named Grant Falco, and he's been visited two different times by the EPA. And honestly, I mean, they weren't they weren't mean or jerks or anything. When they came to him, they were they were asking questions and wanting information. And so for him, it was a really good dialogue. And, and, and his advice as I've talked to him is like. You know, don't throw them out of your show or invite them in. Talk about the regulation. Hey, here's what we're trying to do to be proactive on it. How does that seem to you? What are you finding out there? What should we be aware of? That, you know, that they're people just like everybody else's. If you treat them with respect, you're probably going to get shown more respect back than if you're a jerk to them and, and you tell them to get out. We, we heard about one retailer that when the EPA came in, they threw them out of the store. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so question here, did anybody see the Facebook Live event that we did talking about NSPS? Couple people, okay. Well, if you go to HPBA's Facebook page, you can see it. So it was me, Grant Falco, Chris Newfeld from Blaze King, and then Rachel Feinstein from HPBA. So we did this Facebook Live event that was centered around this idea of five things you need to survive NSPS. And basically, we just we went live and we just we took an hour and just answered questions. It was amazing. We had like 50 to 60 dealers from all over the country that were watching, tuning in, and I think since then it's got like over 2,000 views, which is, is pretty crazy for our industry. But that's a good resource if you want to just get questions from dealers trying to figure out what to do. What I wanted to hit really quick is five things that we've put together to be thinking about if you're a retailer. So, you know, I'm really big on ebooks and articles. This is one that we put out a little while ago called five things you need to survive NSPS. And if you're a retailer, you know, number one, what you gotta be thinking about is to believe the facts and not the hype. So no matter what your sales rep says or your manufacturer says about sell-through and, and promises, the facts are that May 15, 2020, it's gotta be out. That is the fact. And if there's a change to that, HPBA will let you know. Your sales rep will not let you know. It will be HPBA that lets you know first. So you gotta believe the facts and not the hype, number one. I think that there's been a lot of false information that's gotten around out there. Not, I mean, I hope not with the intentions of being deceitful, but just with kind of some false hope. And there's a lot of companies that are you know, spreading information about, well, hey, things are gonna be just fine. You just place that early buy like normal, like we're gonna get it figured out. And you gotta believe the facts. The fact of the matter is that May 15, 2020 is the deadline, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. And so you gotta just know that, number one. Uh, number two is to start preparing your inventory now. So obviously, as a retailer, I know a lot of you have been really proactive on this, but I mean, you're gonna have to look at your inventory in a way that you never have before. And you're gonna need to take a look at how many stoves do I have in my barn? What do we have committed on early buys if your company does those? How many stoves did we sell last year and in what months? And start planning out discount structures now. I mean, it's better to give away a little bit now than to be stuck at the end with a whole bunch of stoves. I had a, a, you know, I've been having dealers write me from all over the country about, you know, they got tons of inventory. What do they do? And I think that you got to just take a hard look at, well, how many freestanders do we have? How many are in cast iron? How many are in steel? How many are in soapstone? You just got to methodically go through it. Hey, this week the stove of the week is our, you know, freestanding steel stove. It's got this discount. 
next week, it's the cast iron stove, it's got this. You just gotta be really, really methodical with it. There's a lot of companies that are in a good space, but there's a lot of companies that aren't. And so you gotta prepare that inventory now and go to work on it in a way that you probably have never had to before. Uh, one thing that Chris Neufeld talked about in the Facebook Live, it was a great idea, it comes from a dealer in California that marked all the stoves on their floor and in their warehouse with either a red dot or a, or a green dot or a blue dot. And one of them meant, this is 2020 ready, we don't have to rush it, and the other one said, get it out right now. So that way, when the salespeople are on the floor, they can quickly assess, hey, which one should I be selling to people? Um, so prepare your inventory now, and just be careful too, as you're taking shipments from manufacturers, there's been dealers who have ordered a series of stoves that the stove's been tested to comply with 2020, but because the distributor still has remaining stock of the non-2020 stuff, that's what they get sent. So just be really, really careful with that, of making sure that in your POs, if you want something that's 2020, you're specifying that. But like John said too, you know, work with your distributors and manufacturers. So step one is getting your own house in order. But then once you've done that, open up the lines of communication with your distributors and manufacturers and say, hey, you know, I'm in a good spot. Can we work together to mitigate this risk, but help us start moving through this product? Because the next thing on our five things list is that you're gonna have to be aware of the discounts that are coming. That just because you sold X amount of wood stoves last year, whether it's 25, 50, 100, 200, you're not gonna sell the same this year. And the reason is because everybody's gonna start to get into a full-blown discounting war. And unless we are proactive and can help out distributors and manufacturers, this is me speaking, not HPVA, but they will become your competition. They will be, because if you're a distributor that's sitting on, pick your number, 400, 500 step one stoves, and you're getting close to the deadline and your dealers won't take them, what do you think's gonna happen? I mean, you're gonna start seeing online, eBay, Craigslist, ridiculous discounts. So, and it's, it's the same thing that we'd all do for our businesses, you gotta take care of your business. So right now, we're sitting here, you know, 10 months out, it's the time to take care of your own house and start opening up the conversations with your distributors and manufacturers. How can we approach this together in a way that we share the risk? And you know, that's just a big thing that you have to take advantage of. Any questions about preparing your inventory? Okay. So you know, next on our list is just be aware of, of shortcuts being taken. So my friend Grant Falco has mentioned this, that cleaner burning does not mean better performing. Cleaner burning does not mean better performing. Just because a stove is clean doesn't mean it's gonna draft well in the real world. It doesn't mean that it's gonna put out heat the way that you're used to. And we have a lot of companies that are having to <coughs> rush their testing methods to meet a standard as opposed to for optimum performance. And so just be very aware of that, that, that you know, start getting stuff on your floor and burning it and testing it because your consumers at the end of the day, they're not gonna hold the manufacturer accountable, they're gonna hold you accountable if that thing's not drafting in their house. And so you just wanna be really aware of that, that, that cleaner burning does not mean better performing. And then the last thing is just to stay in the loop with HPBA. You know, uh, it's kind of funny. So when we, did any of you guys see this when it came out from HPBA a little while ago? So HPBA sent this out to a bunch of dealers maybe four or five months ago. And, and they, we had dealers writing HPBA saying, well, where have you been? How did this even happen? You know, and, and John's laughing because it's like, well, they've been working on this for 10 years. And I mean, I've personally been to Washington DC shaking hands with senators talking about this issue. And we didn't get sell through the way that we wanted to, but it's not for lack of effort. So you gotta stay in the loop with what HPBA is doing. You know, as, as we look at, as we look at 2020, I think that, that the big thing is just is just being ready for it. You know, keep those lines of communication open and make sure that you're managing your business tighter in, in a way that we have before. Because, you know, regulations here, and at the end of the day, like we all want clean air. We, we all want we all want fair regulation, but we can't I, I, I just I guess I'm saying that we need to just be proactive on this. We need to be proactive in a way that we probably haven't before because NSPS is here. And, and I actually do think that there's tremendous opportunity, even though uh, it's, it's very difficult, there's gonna be some businesses that have to make some really tough decisions. I think that for the businesses that can be proactive, there is absolutely opportunity, but it comes down to starting to manage your inventory now. And, and one suggestion that we had was a guy talking about, I mean, even right now, maybe you sell a display model at like a really steep discount and you tell the customer that you're gonna get it on May 14th, 2020. And that way you can sell through all your remaining inventory 
and you can work with your manufacturer, distributors, maybe just get onesie twosies after that. And this is pre-sold. So the, you know, the display model just left, it, it goes right before the regulation. There's all kinds of creative ideas that you can do. But the point with it is to be proactive. Don't fall asleep on this because you know it's a big deal. And, and it could cripple you if you're not proactive on it. So the, I guess the last thing I'll say is if it would be helpful for you, so this thing, five things you need to drive NSPS, it's, it's, a, it's an ebook just like the ones I was talking about yesterday. And if you want this emailed to you, I'd be happy to do that. And uh, I got a, I got a, just a generic email sign-up form right here. But if this would be helpful for you to get you know, some detail on these five different things of how to prepare for the discounts that are coming, how to make sure that you're proactive with your inventory, if that stuff would help you, you guys are welcome to pass this around if you want. Any questions from the retailer's perspective? Nothing, all right. Yeah. I used to have a retail sh store, and I thought about doing it again. But I yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and and honestly, this is this is something too to think about is depending on your market, whether you're, you know, in a rural area or somewhere where there's a lot of solid fuel being burned, if that's a big staple of your business, I would just go into this season with the realization that your money is probably not going to quite be the same as past years in this category. So if you can diversify your portfolio, whether it's with your gas products or drills or, or whatever it is, just just be aware of that. That I I truly truly believe that we're going to see discount wars and in, in online you know shopping in, in a way that we haven't, and hopefully it rolls over. And, and I mean honestly, hopefully people are really proactive on this, and it's not big, as big of a deal as we think it is. But you just got to be aware of that. So if wood's a big portion of your business. Start preparing now because I, this year is going to be different than past years because everyone's going to be rushing to that deadline. Because once May fifteen hits, I mean, you can't even, you can't even give the stoves away. You, they're literally going to be your boat, your boat anchor. You can't give them away. They got to be just you know thrown away and gone. Um, I guess so. One last thing too that John talked about. How, yeah. So her question for people that didn't hear it is, what happens if you sell a stove for a new construction project before the deadline, but the installation of it's not going to be until after? And I would, I would plead the fifth on that. I can even email Chris Newfeld and ask what he thinks, because he knows the rule better than I do. That being said, if you can prove that it was sold, there's an exchange of goods, you've got the serial number, the invoicing, I would imagine that that counts as a sale, but I would, I'll defer it, Chris, on that. I can get you, I can get you an answer. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, maybe that's where you, you invoice you invoice the labor separately. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a paid and full sales ticket. Maybe invoice the labor and the chimney separately afterwards. Yeah, I, I want to defer Chris on that. I don't know if a down payment counts as a sale. I, I can I can get you an answer and talk to Erica though. Uh, my suggestion would be just to have it then take it and store it the contractor to take it and store it wherever they're going to store it at. I know it's not always the way to go, but when it comes to getting that kind of a deal on well, a stove yeah, that you're trying like to move. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. One, one thing I wanted to address too before I get done is, is what do we tell consumers? So, you know, this is, this is my two cents and you can take it with a grain of salt, but my two cents is that don't advertise the 2020 stuff. Don't, I mean, honestly, like I'm telling my teams, like don't even mess with it because, you know, when you think about the difference in efficiency between a step one and a step two stove, it is like literally nothing. I mean, it is it is so minute. It is there's no, I mean, there's just there's no tangible difference that's going to affect the consumer. So my advice, this is Tim Reed speaking, but my advice would be get your back end ready. If a consumer asks you about it and says, hey, I saw online that you know there's some changes in 2020. I would explain it something along the lines of like, you know, there's been a lot of innovation in wood stoves over the last 30 years. And where we're at right now is stoves are actually really, really efficient and clean burning. It's kind of like the regulation would be changing to regulate Toyota Priuses from being able to drive 49 miles per gallon to 50 miles per gallon. 
And so just you know, being honest with you, that regulation is going to take, take effect. And if it's a make or break for you, we absolutely can get you a 50 mile per gallon Prius. But that being said, there's not gonna be any tangible difference. And based on your home, I think that this is gonna be the best fit for you. So that's the way that we are going to address it. We're not gonna display 2020 ready in any of our advertising, nothing like that. Not because we wanna be manipulative, but because frankly, there's, there's just a, a difference that is completely negligible and arbitrary between step one and step two. And while we will absolutely comply with the regulation, that's not something we need to confuse customers with. But if they come to us, I would use that analogy. Hey, there's been a lot of innovations with wood stoves. We used to be driving these old trucks that got five miles to the gallon. Now we're up to a Prius that's, that's going like 49 to 55 per gallon. We're being regulated to go from 49 to 50 miles per gallon, and that's what you're going to be getting. That's, I think that's an analogy that makes some sense. Yeah. Um, I just heard what you were saying, but for me, putting a catalytic converter on something is going backwards in innovation. And There's a lot of manufacturers that think a, a cat is moving forwards, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm just going to say this, that catalytic technology has evolved just like every other kind of technology, and whether you go catalytic or non-catalytic, there are unbelievably good and clean burning stoves that are out there. It's just it's, it's like any other technology. Any other questions about how to address it with a retailer or with a consumer? Yeah. Just a comment, I guess. Uh, isn't all this ultimately about uh, punitive and it's about regulating solid fuel out of existence? So his question is, isn't all this punitive and about regulating solid fuel out of existence? And, and I would say no. That speaking from the HPBA's national perspective, we welcome regulation because we want clean air. Now, we want to be a part of the discussion to make sure it's fair and that it's, and that it's good and it's safe for consumers, that it's good for retailers and manufacturers. But at the end of the day, we all want clean air. And so while the way that step one and step two have played out is very arbitrary, you know, even talking with lawmakers, the heart behind it, I think, is, is coming from a good place that they want, they want clean air. And I think that the fundamental misunderstanding has been that the difference between step one and step two is so negligible. What we really need to go after is get the old stoves out of there that are dumping, you know, 40, 50, 60 grams of particulate out every single hour. But follow up. Yeah. Your point with that you're taking from 49 miles to the gallon to 50, you're making such a negligible difference compared to 2015 when we we had time to get rid of the product and yep. stuff. Now this we're gonna be code active, right? Yep. Now, the golf can make it make their picture yep. scrap. Um, it just seems like only concerned that it's just no government overreach and to your point I want to be there too. Yeah. But they're going nuclear against it. Yep. So he made a great point about how what, what seems punitive to him is the jump from step one to step two. When the real, when you really move the needle with it, is going from the old ones into step one. And that was what made the big difference. What, yep. How they allowed us to get Yep. Absolutely. And, and that's been the fight of the HPBA is, is to say that at some point you get to diminishing returns. You know, when you've already improved the efficiency of something by 94, 95 percent you start splitting hairs with less and less return as you go down the path. And I think that that's just something that if it comes up with the consumer, you can just explain that, hey, you know, government doesn't always think the same way we do. They don't understand this exactly the same way. But regardless of that, here's where we are. We're being regulated to go from 49 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. We're gonna comply with that. But that being said, you know, we can still get you for the next 10 months a great stove that's gonna get you, you know, 49 miles per gallon. I think I said per hour, not per gallon. Yeah. Uh, so when I did have the, the Hearts store, they, they had the 30% uh, credit rebate. Yeah. Is there any, what, why would they not throw a bone out and say, okay, we're going to do this, but we're going to offer this so that you can sell more? Than so? Well, so we, that was something that we were, that we were fighting for, different <coughs> options for sell through credits and things like that. Uh, talking with, with Chris Neufeld, you know, because in 2015 there was sell through. I think it was, John, was it two years or three years of sell through? No, it was to the end of the year. Oh, so the okay, so, so 12 months of sell-through for wood stoves. And 
to my knowledge, there's not been an NSPS to date that hasn't allowed some kind of self through. And talking with Chris Newfeld, he believes that it's at, that, that was actually an error and an oversight on EPA's part that they weren't they weren't trying to screw us, but it was just they just they missed it. And unfortunately, the rules been made, and it's a lot harder to go back once it's been made. Um, yeah. So, but but yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the arguments that we've been talking about. So, where I am in Portland, Oregon, in the county that I live in, Washington County they had some issues with air quality and they were on the verge of starting to have a 30 year date with, AP, with EPA, which no community wants, especially when we got Intel and big you know, places like that in Washington County. So for, the, for three years or so, I've been, I've been working with some of the local government to help them with their wood stove change out the program. And John's been real instrumental with that too. The point being is that for about two and a half, three years, we've got a wood stove change out program to replace old stoves with step one compliant products. And one of the arguments that I made at the national level to our senators was, I can show you in Washington County, Oregon, how just moving to step one has totally improved the air quality. And so we're getting ready to throw away all these step one stoves that in your own state, you've got incentives to improve air quality by putting them in. We can't just throw them out to you know, go to step two, which is just a marginal amount cleaner. All that said, that's under the bridge. Those, those conversations happened. The rule has been made. And going back to talk about it isn't, isn't going to change anything. So we tried to use those arguments. And uh, you know we are where we are now. So I think the point now is what are we going to do moving ahead?